Hi, it's Ram Better Tattooing, and today we're going to talk about deposit depth of pigment, uh, and what it what it means. Is it is it good to make sure that you blow it out rather than have it fade away? Let's talk about that. All right. Okay, now that's over with. Uh, deposition depth of pigment. This is uh, something that a lot of people, I think, oh, this is the bad one. Don't don't think about it too often. Maybe they do. I don't know. I, it's kind of a mixed bag with me when I think about how we're supposed to be doing a tattoo. Because, like, while the things we're going to be saying right now can make a lot of sense normally, this is in a perfect controlled environment. You have perfect healthy skin and a perfect heel and a perfect running machine and perfect grade needles and perfect pigment, da 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 So it'd be perfect, right? And there's always gonna be allowances on this. And I'm not saying like, if the skin's just nasty, don't do this, no. <laughs> this is where education and experience comes into play, right? If you're doing a tattoo and you are just shoving a ton of pigment, and we have a, one a video that we just put out about oversaturation link, um, we end up like cramming a whole bunch of pigment into a space. As the body ages, the, the skin shrinks, right? And as it shrinks, wherever we've kind of like, you know, traumatized the skin to a point that it requires scar tissue. I mean, there's always gonna be scar tissue because it's, you know, it's been damaged. But, uh, you know, if our needle's going one way versus the other, the pigment is gonna have a tendency to flow in the path of least resistance, which is the least structurally sound skin that we have in a tattoo. So. What happens if your needles run in perpendicular to the skin and you're burying that stuff way, way, way down? Well, this is, this is usually, I mean, you could probably guess, right? If you're globbering this stuff straight down, where's it go? It's gonna go into the body, <laughs> right? So when we see some tattoos, maybe that have, uh, they've yarded out their needle, right? At the end of the tube and they've got, I mean, however many needles and it's it's way the jesus out there and you're still seeing not very much pigment that's being left in there it doesn't mean that it's topically inserted unless they really have no idea what they're doing and they're just like fan shading with this yarded out needle and just damaging the top layer of the skin when they're doing the tattoo but if they're like half burying it and it's still coming out thin usually what's happening is one you're going to see bruising afterwards because that needle is probably punctured past the bottom layer of the dermis Severed the ECM, start hitting the subcutaneous tissues, which is uh, um, But two is that even though there isn't a whole lot of pigment here, even with the trauma and stuff that's there, this should stay relatively fixed. So even though it's going to look chunky and you know kind of gross, it's probably going to heal out long term really, really well because there isn't a whole lot of pigment there to get Oreo cookied when it you know ages. So if we have the same thing, maybe we got our needles going you know somewhat decently. You know, whatever your average throw is coming out of the tube and you're packing it in there and you're seeing like I've got good depth you know it's not it's not too deep etc 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 but you know you've got a whole bunch there <clears throat> usually what happens is the pigment moves to the sides right but if you're doing this and you've got that stuff yarded out a little bit and you're burying it too far what happens is it is literally just going to just keep pushing out and as the body ages once again this comes down it is going to bleed out more and more and more It'll expose leaky lines at different time frames right because like if we do the tattoo at the origin point and this is the life of the person what we're trying to do is extend that spot where the tattoo starts to look like garbage but just using really good technique right if I have perfect technique maybe I can have it you know at 30 year mark it still looks great depending on the size and scale <coughs> if I'm doing the same tattoo but I've got horrible technique it starts to look aged you know within six months or a year so when we're doing things in tattooing it's not it's not just art like realistically we're all little surgeons depositing a foreign substance into a body that, that doesn't want it there. It's not supposed to be there. And so we're having to do a bunch of stuff to trick the body into, you know, accepting it and keeping it there in the most happy way. And usually what we do is we try to, you know, decrease the amount of trauma that we're having, right? So less trauma. Uh-oh. Well, if I can remember spell trauma. There we go. Less trauma plus... <laughs> Uh, what does it say? The right amount of pigment. Uh -huh. 
because I can't multitask equals, right, a good tattoo. See, and this is where a lot of people, I think, don't don't see this on, on my side. Like, I'm like an engineer. I'm not just like a guy who goes out and builds houses and doesn't understand why you're using pine instead of oak for this thing, right? They can build a beautiful house. I'm kind of more on the other side. Like, I've learned all the structural stuff for this area and the humidity and the weight load and bearing and all this blah, 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 blah. So I'm always looking at the structure of how this stuff is being done in technical application. To me, if I see a tattoo that's not traumatized, and it's the right amount of pigment. I don't care, honestly, about the artwork because there's so many styles that are out there. It's a good tattoo. <coughs> I've judged at conventions, like literally, least amount of trauma, right amount of pigments in the skin. So that's the best tattoo of the day and I have had death threats from people. And I'd be like, listen, this is why. Yours is chewed up. You have oversaturation in these spots. That did I look at this other one. It's perfect. Technically, it's perfect. I don't give a damn if it's a peacock and you know you did a portrait that it doesn't matter to me the tattoo is just did you work with that person correctly so this is what i'm thinking about if you're doing something it takes a lot of time to learn and understand how deep is deep enough right but usually what i'll do is i'll come in because everyone is different and you start out with your liner not only to you know I guess get your line work into the body, but also to calibrate the design to the person that you're working with, which I guess maybe we should just make this a two-parter because that was actually pretty quick. We use black to calibrate. Calibrated design, let's see this, calibration. <coughs> Excuse me. Plus, yeah, yeah, we're all a little bit sick in the house right now, so. I've got like this nasal drip thing and I just keep coughing, but I'm like, fine. Um, anyways, calibrating a design, what we're doing is we're taking a surface substrate or other medium that we have, right? It could be paper, it could be canvas, it could be a block of wood, it could be skin, it could be whatever, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find what that natural resting state is, right? How light it is compared to the darkest thing that we can put in there. If you've ever done graphite drawings before, what you'll do is you'll usually come in and you'll find a picture that you're trying to replicate if you're doing realism, et cetera, et cetera. And then you start creating these graded marks on the side, right, that end up showing boop, 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 um, how dark, a solid dark piece of whatever your darkest medium is that you're using on there, up to the lightest. And, and you're comparing it against whatever that field is there. And in tattooing, what we're doing is we're looking at the person's skin. So we have a design that we have over here, right? And we're trying to copy it onto the skin. We're gonna find the spaces in it that we know are gonna be the darkest. And then the other spots that maybe we'll line up and add different detail inside of there, right? Now, when we do something with a white background like we do with paper, Photoshop, or you know, Procreate or whatever, um, <clears throat> What we're not doing is we're not taking that person's skin into account. So when we first do our tattoo, one of the reasons why we use line work is not only to establish the design to the body, but also to calibrate that design to the person. Because if they have any sort of melanin on their body, while a line may look very, very, very dark on one person, on another person, it may not look as dark, right? Because their skin around it may end up making it look a whole lot closer to like their skin tone than, than actually what the design calls for. And if that happens, what is potentially like a multi-tonal, you know, aspect of this design that you could apply with all the shading and colors and stuff, you have to start removing them because they're not going to work with the person's skin. <clears throat> and this becomes really, really, really evident when you start getting into melanated skin where like the, the more melanin <clears throat> that you run into, the less available tones that you're gonna to have to see that are gonna be available for the viewer at a distance. I mean, you can still put them in there and you may have to use the focus light source to bring them out, but when you <clears throat> are doing a tattoo, it's not gonna be as dramatic as, as it is on somebody who maybe has skin that's this tone, which is why when you go on Instagram, people use a lot of filters to make people's skin consistently look like this, even if they have melanin, which is, I, I'm not going to talk about that. That's just, I'm going to start ranting if I do that. So <clears throat> I don't like it. I don't think it's fair. It's not about the artwork. It's about the client. Anyways, that's enough. Um, so why does this matter when we talk about depositing uh, pigment at a specific depth inside of the skin? Well, when we have a calibrated design that we know is going to be fit to someone so that we have like 
we know exactly how dark something is going to be and how light it can potentially be given the substrate, which is the skin that we're working in. Normally what people try to do is up the concentration gradient and they're dumping this pigment into the skin to make it appear like there's more there, right? If I have a big chunky line on someone's skin next to one that's very thin, there's going to be more here, right, than there, <coughs> which would be less. Um, so the idea is that this is going to show up more because it's getting more energy and light to interact with, right? But depending on the depth that each one of these is going to be set at, they're going to age differently. If this is heavily oversaturated, very deep in the skin, we're going to see a large amount of that migrate into the body, get collected in lymph nodes, and this may fade away. It may actually get pushed out. You don't know. I mean, if it's really, if that person was just getting that saturation to the point that it is literally the top layer of that dermis, I mean, a scratch could take that stuff out. You don't know. <clears throat> I have seen things happen where people have buried things all the way, thank you, Apple Watch, have buried uh, pigment all the way down and you get cut with a box cutter and that thing stays solid, right? But I've seen people do very thin things like this and it looks perfect and they can get cut with like, a, I don't know, a scratch, a cat, something like this, and it'll literally just take a chunk right out of it. Are these going to age the same? No, of course not, right? The amount of pigment that's there is just, is just different. You think about like filling a steel bucket with water and it's slowly getting crushed by a hydraulic press. The water will go somewhere. That is what happens with this stuff. So when you're calibrating your design, I like how this all just kind of work together. Just do this off the dome. Anyways, um, when you're calibrating your design, you know exactly like how dark you can make something. It's going to help you feed into like exactly how deep that you should be doing stuff because you're not going to be trying to make the skin work for the image. Instead, you're going to be making the image work for the skin. There's only so much that you can stick in the skin. There's only so much terror that you can impart on someone's body to try and get that tone to look the way that you want. There's only so much editing that you can do to hide all these things as well, right? So if you see something and it usually is going to see like you'll see the skin is almost broken, maybe shiny or glossy around there where it looks like it's a little bit blah, blah, blah. On pictures, zoom in. People love it when you do that and make a comment. Um, it's because it's overworked because they haven't calibrated the skin and they're depositing that pigment way too deep. And they're saying they're going over it and over it and over it and over it. And just like using a marker, you start going over, it just creates all these blank spots where we don't have any structural integrity left to hold onto the pigment. It's a mess. So, <laughs> last thing. We should say this because I don't know if anyone else has said this. <clears throat> when we're thinking about depositing the pigment in the skin and we are worried about health consequences for potential carcinogenic compounds or other things that are found in the body, there's no data on this. So this is hypothetical. So if you don't like hypotheticals, turn this off now. But my, my impression on this with everything that I've learned is that when we start putting pigments further down on the skin, they have a greater propensity to flow into the body and it gives it easier access to those things that we don't want in our body if they are created due to photodegradation of various colors or additives, that it's just easier to access it, right? If you have a space and something, we'll say it's a net, right? You have a net, it's out in the water, you have something that's really close to the net and something that's further away and the waves are going, you're very sure that the one that's close to it is gonna get through, the one further away, maybe, maybe not. You don't know, right? <clears throat> so when we deposit this stuff really deep, because we haven't calibrated our design or made it for the fucking body, uh, those, those potential fadings and leakings and leachings and all the other stuff that's going on, it's gonna go somewhere. And when the colors start to fade on someone's tattoo, where do they go? They go in the body. Normally what happens is you have a bit of pigment. Let's do like a 3D rendering here. This would be like a phthalo blue. They're really, really interesting, like this lattice structure type thing. They stack on top of each other, almost like a sugar cube too. So light comes in and it, you know, reflected off, other stuff gets absorbed, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and phthalo colors are really, really, really efficient. They're also really friggin' small, which is kind of interesting on like an atomic scale. Um, they trap energy really, really well into bouncing stuff out. But because they're so small and because to get them actually to look relatively neat together because they're easily dispersed and separated because they're not water like soluble at all um we start filling up the area we'll, we'll place them deeper and when the skin starts to swell etc it looks like those colors have faded out or maybe they are actually getting pushed out of the body uh, we go over it again and again and we just start packing those the phthalo colors that are the ones that are being banned in europe right and 
as it heals and it ages, that stuff just flows into the body. Because, I mean, it looks great when they're all aggregated together and they do this stuff, you know? But if, if it's so low into the body and you've gone way too deep, where is it going to go? The skin is really good at keeping things out, but it also keeps stuff in, right? Like our guts aren't falling out. <laughs> we don't just have water spraying out everywhere. Some of us do, uh, depending on what you ate the night before. Yeah. Um, so it, it's not going to just like sit fixed. If there is a way for this stuff to get out, for your body to re return to more static state, then it will take it. So this is why it's really important. Moving forward, everyone should be thinking about this depth and de deposition of, of your pigment because it can have health consequences, hypothetically, um, but it will also age at different rates, right? Calibrate your design, deposit it right, save a life. I don't know, is that right? Hi hypothetically. And that's it. Let us know what you think, if that made sense or not. <clears throat> I am running on a little bit of sleep and kind of like Theraflu head. So that's it for today. Uh, like, subscribe, buy a hat, uh, send us an email, whatever. We'll talk to you next time. This is Ryan from Better Tattoo and signing off.